Hmm. Hello, friends. I don't know what sort of friends you are. To me, some of you are really very close friends, and I've enjoyed my interactions and my relationship with you for many years. Some of you are just familiar names, which I come across if you put your name on the chat box. So there's this whole range of people who join together on Saturdays, and we shall now talk about different types of uh, uh, friendships. I have been mentioning to you that we are moving more and more from what we call as defined relationships to undefined relationships. That means just one or two generations back, if you ask your grandparents or the uh, elder people of that generation, they will tell you that everything was you know, fixed. There were huge joint families. They were all together. The community was living in the same village or the same locality. They had used to go to the same temple. They had the same habits. They had same hobbies, functions, and festivals used to be celebrated together. Even vacations used to be together. So you were all confined to that you know, defined relationships. In fact, there was a lot of uh, uh, thing where people used to say that you know, what belongs to the family should never go out. People were discouraged from talking about anything about the family or about our close-knit people to so-called outsiders. Now, you may have noticed, particularly in the urban uh, lifestyle, more and more and more of those outsiders have become insiders, right? And many of the insiders, that means people who are very close to our blood relations and this and that, they may be anywhere in any corner of the country or even the world, and we may be only meeting them periodically. So the significance and the importance has gone more on what we call as the undefined relationships and which we, in very general terms, we talk about as friends. What else will you say unless this one is my sister, this one is my cousin, this one is whatever, my nephew. But if they don't belong to that, then what do you say? This person is my friend. Sometimes we even you know, expand it. We say that so-and-so works with me in the office. We are colleagues, but we are also good friends, you know, compared to all the other colleagues in the office. So out of that also you select. <clears throat> Among all my neighbors, I have got one or two, you know, who are very good friends of uh, mine. So we keep coming back to this concept of the uh, friend. Now, out of all the friends that you have, and in fact, I would request you after this program is over to do a little bit of homework and a little bit of uh, introspection, which will help you to decide how your relationships are going and also to decide how you should make your relationships go in the coming years and you know, how life moves on. So there are friends who you can say whether we meet or not, we meet once in a year, once in five years but we still have a very deep emotional attachment. Whenever we meet, we start talking as though we had met last week and we are just continuing with our uh, conversation. That Those are the type of people who you can say are friends with such a deep emotional connect. And in those cases, it is very rare that that friendship breaks unless one of them does really something bad for a very long period and then the other person gets frustrated and says, no, I don't want to continue. Most of such friendships which have already lasted time and it did not make a difference whether you could meet regularly or not, whether you had common habits or not, whether you stayed close to each other or not, you continued to be emotionally connected to that uh, person. Now, compared to that, you will find that you have a lot of other, in inverted commas, friends around the uh, place. One is, of course, the neighborhood. So if you step down from your uh, house or apartment and there are other people, there's some playground, there is some common area, there is some activity going on somewhere. So you have those people and you meet them as friends. Same thing I uh, told you about office uh, colleagues. So you start spending more and more time with particular colleagues. You say, okay, why don't we have lunch together? Or why don't we stop by for a cup of coffee after office and we'll chat up on something. Again, back to neighborhood. Sometimes you say that, you know, uh, why don't both of us go for a walk at six o'clock in the morning? 
because if I know that you're waiting for me at six o'clock, that gives me that impetus, you know, otherwise I'm too lazy. Every time I think that I must get up before six and I must go for a walk, but somehow it gets delayed and I don't, uh, uh, you know, fix up with it and I don't uh, go for that walk. But if you are willing and the other person says, yeah, the same thing happened, uh, happens to me also. So come on, let's fix it up. Six o'clock, we'll meet downstairs at such and such a uh, 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 point. And, uh, you know, now that gives you that impetus. Now you are meeting that person every day, exactly at six o'clock. You're probably spending the next 45 minutes walking and talking. 45 minutes every day, five days, six days, seven days in the uh, week. Anybody would think that you are such close friends that you're spending so much time together. Same thing in the office. Like I said, you know, you prefer having lunch or tea with particular one or two or whatever is your uh, colleagues like that. You find everywhere you will be adding on to what we call as uh, 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 friends and you're very comfortable with uh, them. Now let's take an example. You have this person who lives in your own uh, uh, apartment complex. And like I was saying, you go for a walk every day or whatever it is. And because you're going for a walk every day, you start feeling connected. You invite that person over to your house for a cup of coffee. That person invites you one day says that I made some special lunch. Why don't you come and have lunch on Sunday with uh, me? So like that, the thing sort of starts growing. At one point of time, let us say, that person moves away from your own residential complex one kilometer down the road, one kilometer, not even a five minute uh, uh, walk. But you find that because that person is no longer available right there, you find that you're not connecting to that uh, person. If somebody asks you, oh, I used to see both of you every day going for a walk. Uh, and I think that one must be a very close friend of yours. How is she now? And you say, yeah, she's fine. I'm meaning to say, I think she's fine because, you know, I haven't been able to. She's not very far. She's quite close by. I can go anytime. And I've been thinking of going also. But somehow I've been so busy the last few days and weeks that I haven't gone. Yeah, good. You reminded me. I think I must go and visit. Even that visit doesn't happen. Now, that is one of the indicators that you maintain a friendly relationship with somebody only because you find something of convenience, a common hobby. As I said, motivating each other to get up early in the morning and go for a walk. Or both of you like the same type of foods on the lunch break. You decide, let's go to this place and both of us will eat lunch uh, together in certain such canteen or uh, restaurant. So like that, or somebody with whom you play a game. So why, why not, you know, come to the club at such and such time, we'll play badminton over there because I feel I can connect much more to you than to any other partner when I'm trying to play badminton, you know, I can really learn if you are uh, uh, there. So you come at such and such time, both of us will uh, uh, play. And obviously after you play, then you say, okay, Let's sit down and have some snacks and uh, coffee or something. And then the person says that, you know, oh, there's a sale going on. I found some very nice dresses there. Oh, come, let's go. No, just show me where it is. Come, you also come with me. We'll go to that sale. So you see how things are increasing. But like I said, the day that club closes down for badminton or that person, for whatever reason, does not want to play badminton, then you don't meet up with that uh, uh, person at all. This is what I want you to understand. Okay. Now, what are the type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, factors that, you know, you know, determine this? So Anis has got a few nice uh, uh, poster type of things which he has uh, pulled out for you people. Let's see the first uh, uh, one. That true friendship isn't about being there when it's convenient. Then what is it? It's about being there when it is not. Give a thought uh, to it. Because it is convenient to have lunch in the same canteen, because it is convenient to go for a walk, because it is convenient to play badminton to that person, nothing wrong with it. 
I am not saying that you should not have such friends. It's very good to have friends of convenience because they enrich your life in certain uh, ways, isn't it? You get to have company for your walk or your badminton or your lunch. It's perfectly okay. My focus today is on the uh, fact that you start mistaking the relationship that you had with that uh, uh, person. You start thinking that this person is really, you know, somebody very genuine because we have known each other for such a long time. We have spent so much time with each other. We have spoken about each other. But somewhere we need to understand the limitation of these so-called friends of convenience. It, I, If I accept the fact that this person is there only because of the convenience, then it is perfectly Okay, so what uh, are the indicators? Let me just you know, uh, tell you. If you have a friend who always seems to be in need of help or advice, but somehow you are not comfortable seeking help or advice from that friend, so it becomes a one day uh, thing. You find friends who seem to be always in trouble. They have some crisis or something going on and they start reaching out to you for uh, that. And at the same time, when you need them, they somehow are not available to you. They may have very genuine excuses. But once, twice, three, four times you tried it out and you realize that, no, when I need this person, he or she is not uh, available. Similarly, they have their social plans. They want to go for a picnic. They want to go for a movie. They've got a birthday party in their family, whatever it is. You are not their first option. When that happens, they say, yeah, you know, I invited all my cousins because we hadn't met for a long time. And that person doesn't invite you to that birthday party or that whatever gathering that they are having uh, together. Another very, very important thing is, is that person showing an interest in your life? Is that person genuinely asking you, checking with you? You are going for that six o'clock walk. You've not slept properly because you had a bad cough, but you have committed to that person. So you somehow get ready and you go down and you are coughing and you start the walk. That person immediately takes the conversation on to something very general. You know, yesterday that uh, Puneet Rajkumar's anniversary was there and then this happened and that happened and I was watching, you know, that latest movie, something very neutral, very, very impersonal. But that person doesn't stop to ask, you're looking a little dull today. Or you have been coughing while uh, uh, walking. How are you? Did you sleep properly? Was it a problem getting up early in the morning? That is what shows the signs that this person is going to be a genuine uh, friend. And similarly, without giving some logical answer or reason, they tend to disappear for quite some time. Okay. Along with that, there is another thing which has come in between friendships. Like how we used to say with uh, in a marriage relationship, you know, pati, patni or wo. Now, between friendships also, there is a wo which is coming in. So if you see the slide which Anish is showing you now, you will immediately know what I am talking about. Here are two friends sitting side by side on a sofa, relaxed. But you see what one of them is doing and see the expression of the other person. Hey, you can do that later. But that person is more interested in her mobile. It may be a meme. It may be a little video. It may be some messages which she has sent out or which her boyfriend sent or whatever it is. But she is not giving value to the fact that here is my friend who has <coughs> taken the trouble to come all the way and is sitting with me. I am fortunate to have this friend so close to me. See the warmth of having that friend sitting right next to you. That is something which is irreplaceable by any gadget or any of these uh, uh, things. So these are some of the things that you need to understand. Okay. At the same time, that friends of convenience can be either that person is a friend of convenience to me or I am a friend of convenience to that person or wonderful, both are friends of convenience to each other. When that is the case, it goes very smoothly. 
if both of them understand and realize that yes, because we are neighbors, we are meeting every day, because we are in the same office, we are having lunch every day, but we are not best friends or this or that, and we are not very closely connected. If tomorrow I'm transferred to another department or I move out from that apartment somewhere else, I'm not going to miss this person. I'm really not so emotionally connected to that. So when both of them understand that, then it goes really fine. But the problem that takes place is when one of them thinks that it is a friendship of convenience and the other one does not. I'll give you a simple example. One of them with whom you've been walking every day or you've been having lunch in the canteen or playing badminton, that person suddenly walks up and says that I have run out of money. I need 5,000 rupees urgently. My ATM is not working. Something is wrong with the card and the bank is closed, etc. So can you give me 5,000 rupees for the weekend? Monday, I will return it to you. And if that person says, sorry, I don't think I can give it uh, to you. And if you were thinking that just because we are spending so much time together and we know each other so well by uh, now, what is 5,000 rupees? We are well-to-do upper middle class people. I'm not going to run away with that 5,000 rupees of that person, but somehow that person doesn't feel like doing it. Anything, I'm just giving an example. You can just say that, you know, can I leave my child here for half an hour? I have to quickly go and buy some medicines and come uh, uh, back. Can you just take care of my child for half an hour? No, I'm busy. No, I don't think he'll be happy over here. Some excuse they give and they say no to it. Even small favors. That is, I think you should uh, uh, understand. And you must learn a few things, which we have been actually, you know, as counselors in Bandar Academy, we have been dealing with innumerable people. And we, without, of course, uh, you know, breaching the confidentiality, sometimes we even share uh, you know, our experiences with our counselors and all that. One of the uh, persons who is, I think, definitely from my point of view, at least, much more than a friend of convenience is our own director, Purnima. Today, she is here with uh, us. So I told her that, why don't you give your views on what you think are the different types of friendships? Here is Purnima. Hey. <coughs> Thank you, Ali. Yes, Ali is more than a friend. Ali. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, something a little amusing uh, I was just uh, thinking was, you know, I have uh, seen a lot of uh, people who uh, go out for trips. You know, they go to Bhutan or they go to Nepal or things like that. And or they go to Europe and it's a one month long trip and they're all together, you know sleeping together, waking up together and doing a lot of uh, things. All their schedules are so synchronized and they start sharing, oh, I forgot my cap. Yeah, don't worry, here it is. So they also <clears throat> try to find a lot of similarity that what is so similar between uh, us so that we both can, you know, become uh, one click, that uh, kind of a thing. And then you almost feel that possibly you are going to start uh, sharing uh, your home also with you know, a couple of uh, people over there. And then just as the trip gets over, the whole thing just goes out, Ali. Yeah. And then you're wondering next time if you ask whether would you like to go for a trip with many people, you'll say, you know, I think we should try out something new. Yeah. So I really wonder that, you know, at that point of time, everybody comes in and they're all together. But it's good also in a way because they're all motivated. They all have a common goal and they're determined to make their trip successful. Yes. So if that is a common goal at that point of time, it can be good also. But we need to see whether we are mistaken in assuming. You know, exactly. As long as you are not mistaken, as long as you are not presuming things, then it is fine. In fact, what I would like to say is have a healthy combination of friends who belong to both categories. You need both of them. It is not that you can only have these true friends and strong uh, emotional attachment friends. How many can you have like that? It's not possible. And also, even if you have such a person, that person may not be available to you. That person may be living in a different city, a different country, or may be so bogged down with his or her work that she can meet you only once in a month or whatever. That is why the friends of convenience uh, you know, come in. It's just that, firstly, from the other person's point of view, avoid people 
who very obviously are befriending you because you have something to give them. The person who knows that, you know, he doesn't have a vehicle and I have a vehicle. So that person comes to me and keeps asking for a lift every now and then. No harm, give him the lift. But don't let him presume that you have become such good friends. Tomorrow he'll come to you and say, take me to such and such place. You say that, no, I'm going in the reverse direction. I think, what? Yeah, it'll hardly take half an hour. Come on, take, drive me there and then go. And if you say no, he gets upset. And if you have to oblige him because you are a very soft person, then you get upset. So either way, as long as you draw the line and as long as you are clear. The other thing I wanted to tell you was that when you reach out to befriend somebody because you are lonely, that is when you inevitably land up with friends who are not going to stand by you. Because it becomes a one way thing. That person did not reach out to you. You reached out to that person because right now, you know, your family is away or you're getting bored and you don't have anybody else. So you are desperately looking out for somebody and you befriend this person. For some time, it looks very nice that, yes, see, we are so good and all that. But it can eventually lead to a lot of, uh, you know, heartbreak. Similarly, from your own point of view, if you are befriending somebody just because he's influential, he's in some position from where, you know, he can dole out favors or he's very rich or he's got this luxurious house in which he gives parties and you can go and attend those uh, uh, parties. Any of such people, please be a little careful. I'm not stopping you. I'm not saying you should not go and uh, meet up with such uh, uh, people. But I want you to be careful about how you go about this uh, um, thing. So let's have a look at the third uh, um, uh, poster, which uh, Anis is going to show you. This is also another interesting uh, uh, one. And that is I realized that maybe I'm just someone's friend of convenience. I make myself available so that they know I'm always here for them. However, they would give me the cold shoulder whenever I needed them the same way they needed me. This is a type of realization which can be very, very hurtful. And this is what you should vaccinate yourself against. The same way as they said, you don't know who's going to get COVID, so you better get vaccinated. The same thing applies over here also. That is what I want you to understand and work on it. And before I move on to the other part of the topic, which some of you may be curiously waiting for, let's have a look at the last poster, which uh, uh, Anis has for uh, us that you have to understand the difference between someone who speaks to you in their free time and someone who frees their time to speak to you. Such a nice quote. I really appreciated this. You know, we should put it up somewhere, maybe next to our uh, phone or whatever it is, you know, to remind ourselves that this makes the difference. Okay. So this is what I wanted to share with you as far as friends of convenience is concerned. Of course, we will have a lot more discussion. I'm sure I'll get some very interesting inputs from you people also in the second half. But I want to you know, touch upon another very sensitive uh, topic, and that is marriage of convenience. You know, a marriage which is contracted for any other reason except compatibility, love, togetherness, warmth. It could be the most uh, convenient, obviously, is wealth. This person is rich. This person can take care of my needs. I won't have to financially worry about anything. So I'm going to get married to this uh, uh, person. It could be for any other type of personal gain. This person is influential. This person has a house so I'm secured with the uh, you know roof over my uh, head. And if you find that that person is using uh, you and then you get upset, I want you to understand that many people do that. It has been a tradition, no? 
I have come across so many families where, let's say, there is this girl who doesn't want to get married to this guy because she says he has somehow he puts me off. I don't like this guy. And they say things like, you know, he comes from a very respectable family. His great grandfather was so and so, so and so. They have so much wealth. They live in such a big house. And he's got so much income coming in from all his properties that even if he doesn't work, you know, he can look after uh, uh, you. Yes. I agree. If you are very clear that I am not looking for love and affection and belongingness and togetherness, then you go ahead with it. But you will understand what you are missing out later on as it uh, goes. So that is what I want you to you know understand. That every now and then we come across marriages of convenience those of you who are counselors or elders advisors those of you who are parents of grown up uh, children please understand that there are severe limitations when it comes to a marriage of convenience like i told you about friendships if it is very clear that this is the only reason why i am marrying because i want money because i want a house because i want job security or whatever uh, it is then fine, but human beings are emotional beings. You have your emotional needs. At that moment, because you needed something, like the same thing I told you about loneliness. Person acquires a friend just because he or she is lonely. I don't have friends. So now that this friend is willing to spend time with me, I will jump onto the bandwagon. No. You're making a mistake. Somewhere later, deep down, you are going to have some sort of a burnout or some sort of a heartbreak. And much more so when it comes to marriage. Those days are gone when a woman used to just, you know, surrender herself in marriage and say, okay, as long as, you know, he's taking care of me, he is my devta, he is my lord and master. So he's taking care of me, he's got all the, you know, means to keep me secure, so I'm happy. I don't think today's young people can live an entire life with a partner who is just providing issues of convenience, be it wealth, be it salary, be it house, be it whatever uh, it is. And that is what we need to be very, very careful about. Because he, even here in Banjara, Purni will also agree with me that we have been doing so many marriage counselings where we realize that these two people have made a very fundamental mistake, or at least one of them has made a fundamental mistake compared to the uh, other by getting into something which you know they should not have uh, got uh, into. And life is very long. You get married when you are 20, 30, whatever it is. And life expectancy is going to be in the younger generation, maybe 90 or 100. So you're going to be spending 60 years, 70 years with your life partner. Things are going to change. You don't know who will have a financial crisis. You don't know who will go through whatever uh, issues. But as and when that happens, if it is a true marriage, if it is based on compatibility, on love, on you know, respect, and on you know that mutual sense of belonging and warmth, then that teamwork lasts out entire lifetime with whatever may be the ups and uh, downs. These are the things which I want you to please understand that we feel sad that thing, prevention being better than cure. Why is it that people get into something whenever somebody comes to us for counseling, be it on relationship issues, be it on marriage issues, be it on parenting, we always, you know, sit back and think and say, why did these, could these people not have done the prevention part of it? Why could not have they taken right decisions? So I request all of you who are listening into this program, please spread this uh, message. Whoever is there, whether they listen to you or not, is not important. Our role is to ensure that we create that awareness and we spread the message to people. Some people will take it. Some people will not take it. But whatever happens, you must have that sense of responsibility to people around you, be it your 
relatives, be it your true friends, be it your friends of convenience, please spread this message. So with that, I'll hand you over to Purni. She'll uh, add on whatever she wants to, and she'll give you one or two quick uh, announcements. And I'll take a break, quick break for my cup of tea. So I'm back. And uh, there's some nice uh, things I wanted to uh, share with you, which are uh, happening at uh, Banjara. One of them is that uh, now, uh, once again, we have you know started getting uh, invited to a lot of outdoor uh, programs. We have been doing that in the past so many uh, for so many years and so many times in a month also that we would be ready to pack and leave and you know do a lot of things. And now we are invited. Uh, to Belgaum. So our team is <coughs> proceeding and uh, we are looking forward to meeting parents, teachers, children. And uh, one uh, nice thing which we are also looking forward to in the team is to be speaking and conversing to with many of them in Marathi also. So along with Kanara and uh, Marathi, we are uh, looking forward uh, to this uh, thing. It's, it really gives us a lot of happiness, uh, you know, when we are with children, they are so uh, naive, they are full of curiosity, they ask you so many questions. So that's uh, something we are really, really uh, looking uh, forward to at this uh, point of time in life. So we are traveling and uh, we'll be back, of course, uh, for the next uh, Saturday talk with you. We'll be back by then, but a trip being looked forward uh, to. And um, we... Uh, also, after uh, we are back, we take uh, for us work and break. They are like kind of synonymous. It's not that it's totally different that we have to take a break and then break out from work. It doesn't happen that way. So how we do that is we hold camps at uh, Banjara's Manthan. We, if many of you all already know about it and those who do not, we uh, have a Banjara has a huge big six acre uh, property, which um, has got, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, what you say, greenery and everything. And that's the uh, poster which says finding inner happiness. So for us, work and break is same. So um, if any one of you even feels that, you know, you would like to come down, spend some time uh, with us and spend two enjoyable uh, days without your gadgets, just chilling out. But at the same time, introspecting and finding your own happiness and finding if uh, some friends of convenience do give me happiness or uh, not, or I'm not going to have any friends of convenience, whatever decisions you are going to be making. So that is the camp which is uh, going to be there on 4th, 5th and 6th. So we start on Friday in the evening, Saturday, full day and uh, Sunday. There are very interesting uh, sessions by uh, Ali and the classroom sessions and very introspective uh, sessions that take place during uh, that time. And of course, there are other activities also hands on. It's like a hands on thing. You are actually doing things, listening, writing and uh, introspecting so that those two days become fun and learning uh, also. So that's what we are going to be uh, doing. Yes, of course, we do have our uh, other courses also, which keep uh, happening from uh, you know time to uh, time. One of the courses uh, which is going to take off just by uh, you know another uh, two to three weeks, and admissions are already on is our post graduation diploma in psychotherapies. So we have many uh, students who don't want to do the rote learning of theories, you know, uh, and uh, write exams or something like that. But then their heart reaches out. To people so they also want to understand the nuances of you know different therapies that are available and hence to facilitate a non-exam non-rote kind of a course uh, we have two fantastic uh, faculties uh, Lakshmi and Chandra so they are the ones I mean just to let you know the names so they uh, will be conducting uh, this course which is called PGDP postgraduate diploma in psychotherapies so those are uh, some uh, announcements, uh, you know, coming up. So we are looking forward to our outdoor trip. We are looking forward to 
manthan and find our own inner happiness and help you to find your own inner uh, happiness and <clears throat> that's about uh, the announcement i was just uh, thinking also while ali is just uh, joining us in in a few uh, seconds that um, you know uh, taking off from uh, what uh, was mentioned that when we are speaking of uh, friends of uh, convenience i think um, to have different peer groups you no know, to have different peer groups maybe some who are uh, uh, you know your study group or people uh, you like to do trekking and you can just take off with them for the you know trek part or your the meditation types and you get into meditation sometimes you know those kind of things or you go to the temple every day so you know 10 30 you'll meet that person every day i think having different uh, peer groups maybe they may be surely friends of a convenience only at that uh, point of time uh, i just thought that possibly the different peer groups also opens up your mindset to variety of thought processes variety of uh, you know uh, different uh, kind of experiences which people have so we have a set of real true friends which someone just put up on the chat also that we recognize uh, true friends and uh, like the old saying uh, goes true friend stands next to you in your times of difficult situations so we also stand by uh, for convenience and sometimes we get the convenience uh, also from uh, different uh, people and uh, with that i would like to invite ali over for the next talk and a lot of questions from your end so looking forward to it yes not only questions but comments and some very nice inputs as i keep reminding those are the things which i really enjoy starting with suchetna who said can we call friendship of convenience a true friendship no that is what i was cautioning you do not make the mistake of thinking that a friendship of convenience is a true friendship because somewhere along the line if that person says no i am too busy for you or i can't do this favor for you or the person just you know acquire some better activities and friends and moves on i don't want you to have a heartbreak and i don't want you to feel uh, upset okay ah dr sai kumar from chennai is with us and he says hi ali all of us have ever so many acquaintances but what about fair weather friends yes that's another nice you must have heard of this uh, you know uh, label called fair weather friends meaning to say hey, when the weather is good when everything is going fine they will be spending a lot of time with you when there is a storm or when things go bad they are the first people to run away from you they don't want to be there with you i think we should be very careful about such uh, uh, people it does not help to have these fair weather uh, friends and many of us have fair weather friends only because we are lonely only because we want to fill in the vacuum so when things are going fine and they are coming and they are spending time with us we feel very nice but i i would like to caution you against it okay vidya says uh, i just need one clarification is it like if a person need me at that point of time and luckily i am available but if i need that person he or she is not available is it that that person is not a true friend or a selfish person no with you don't go by one such incident that can happen to anybody isn't it that person may have a genuine commitment or a reason for not uh, you know being there with you but in general with these friends of convenience you know what happens there is a pattern that forms somehow it looks that whenever you know that person needs me she reaches out to me and i oblige her but i have noticed one two three times whenever i have been asking for uh, something i'm not getting it from that person somehow that person some, seems to suddenly become busy or have other commitments or something so when a pattern forms i'm still not saying stop the friendship you may be a very soft hearted and nice person who wants to oblige others but be very clear that you are not going to have any expectations from that person the way you give out charity if there is a beggar who is really very badly off and very sick or whatever it is you do give charity you give food or you give whatever uh, money or whatever it is but you don't have expectation know that when i need money he is going to give it to me so you that we should be very clear on right <clears throat> sujana so says true friendship can continue for life when there is no expectation from both ends am i right no sujana so i would not say that because 
there is no true friendship or there is no you know lifelong friendship without expectations the very definition of a relationship is expectations like i told you if i don't have expectation from the beggar to whom i'm giving charity i don't have a relationship with the him every day i may be meeting him every day i may be giving him something and every day he may be blessing me and saying may you have eight sons or whatever is the old time blessings but i'm not in a relationship with that person i have no expectation from that person there should be expectations but two things one is expectations should be realistic from whatever the other person is capable of giving uh, me the second is expectation should be balanced on both sides so when i need him he is there for me when he needs me i will be there for him right uh how do we identify who is a real friend with your asking yes that is very important i have been talking about it in the first half i will extend that to tell you test that person out try out that uh, person you've been having lunch every day with that uh, uh, person both of you bring your tiffin and you sit and Uh, share and uh, you eat uh, together one day you uh, tell him that you know tomorrow i am not in a position to bring my tiffin because we are not uh, going to be cooking so can you bring some extra food and i will share with you a small uh, request let's see whether the person responds now your friendship is as i said during the lunch break or a cup of coffee after the this thing one day you tell that uh, uh, person that i want to spend some time on a sunday i want to discuss this 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 issue uh, with uh, you you know can you oblige me can we meet up at something but as i said don't go by one time that person may say no sundays i have uh, fixed up to go and meet my parents and, and i spend the whole day with my parents i don't that, that's perfectly okay but next time you can say okay can i meet you on saturday evening and again he has an excuse next time you say can i meet you on a big day and again the person has an uh, excuse that is when you know that things are not uh, uh, what they should be okay vijay lakshmi says uh, i should not ask who is my real friend am i real friend to someone that is the right question always be concerned with yourself why should you not ask who is uh, uh, your uh, real friend you should ask from time to time sometimes the friend of convenience slowly becomes a real uh, friend the person realizes your value and slowly starts getting closer to you sometimes it can even be the other day way i was just discussing with my colleagues in the morning that you know some of my very old friends who i thought were uh, you know uh, true friends they've drifted away so much it's not their fault maybe for whatever reason their lifestyles have changed their priorities have changed i don't find them to be real friends i have to accept it that there was a time when these people would have been there for me and i would have been there for so their life has taken us in two different directions so i have accepted it that i now need more you know new uh, uh, true friends i can't rely on those childhood people just because we were so close in those good old uh, days vinita says thank you for speaking on the topic friendship cannot work one way at all absolutely and it's also true that sometimes to have friends who are there for convenience which helps us recognize true friend yes that's right you, you can compare and see like the old saying goes a true friend stands next to you in your difficult situation and uh, uh, times person doesn't just stand uh, next to you uh, vinita you heard of that uh, uh, quote which every now and then floats over the internet that you know this person was uh, walking on the sand and he saw god walking along with him and then he saw the, the footprints of two people and at one point when he was really in trouble he saw that god's footprints or uh, one uh, set of footprints have disappeared so he asked god why did you abandon me when i needed you most he said no those are not my footprints which are missing it is your footprints which are missing because when you were in trouble i carried you i mean it's very nostalgic and very sentimental but to whatever extent possible that is what a true friend should uh, be like okay vinita says i think i am blessed to have a few true friends yes vinita we just need a few one two three is more than enough you don't have to look at numbers you have to look at quality and not quantity yes roshan says 
Luckily, I've not had any heartbreaks in marriage and in friendship. The reason being that I'm totally independent and love to serve others without any expectation that keeps me busy and at the same time happy. Yes, if we can rise to that level where we say that even if I don't get reciprocation, because I like this person or I'm married to this person or I, I have this person as my very close uh, friend, I will continue to you know, perform my obligations. I will continue to reach out to that person because there is a joy in giving. No, Some of us like Roshan do feel that joy that I am giving it without uh, you know, expecting unnecessarily. Yes, I do have my expectations. I'm also human. I'm also an emotional person. I would be very happy if that person reciprocates. But if that person does not uh, reciprocate, I still go ahead with it. I don't allow myself to have a broken uh, heart. Hmm. Navina says, I think first we need to identify our emotional needs. You are absolutely right. Expectations and answer the question as to why I am reaching out to this person as a friend and also reflect as to what in me is special, which is different and may appeal to the other person. Absolutely right, Navina. I think that's a very nice point which you have brought up. After this, I think it's very important to communicate your thoughts, expectations to the other person at an appropriate time. Yes, I am a very strong believer that communication is the first pillar of a close relationship. You should be able to convey your innermost thoughts and your deepest emotion. Then, even if it leads to argument, even if the other person does not agree, you can both agree to disagree, but you should have that, you know, comfort of saying that no whatever happens i am going i feel comfortable sharing my views and my thoughts with this person sarda says just like friends of convenience do we have relatives of convenience? oh yes we have more of them than we have friends there are a lot of relatives floating all over the place just because they are related to you they feel that they have a right over uh, you and they make certain demands which, as I said, nothing wrong because they are related uh, to you. But when you ask them for a smallest return favor, you find that you are not getting uh, it. And that is when you know that, OK, they are relatives. I will not uh, you know, just uh, junk them completely. I will show my basic obligation or whatever my duties towards uh, them. But I will not go that extra mile to befriend such relatives. Surekha says, how to build our emotional immunity with a friend who could be unpleasant at times, but is good most of the uh, times. The first thing, Surekha, was what I said just now, communication. Do I feel comfortable enough to tell this person that, yes, most of the time, you're so nice to me, I enjoy your company, and you know you speak so well. But there are times when I find that you are you know, not very nice to me. I feel hurt, I feel upset, and I have expectations because I consider you as a good friend. So this, this, this that you do hurts me very badly. Can you change? That should be our first uh, attempt. If the person still does not oblige, then look for triggers. Sometimes it happens, you know, you talk about politics and that person gets very, very emotional and he is a supporter of only one particular party or one particular way of thinking. Avoid talking politics to such a person. So whatever may be the issues which lead to this unpleasantment, you know, uh, make sure that you don't touch upon those uh, things. Even if that person brings it up, you change the topic. Don't give your opinion on that particular uh, touchy uh, topic. If even that does not work, then you should start withdrawing, right? Roshan says, in my times of difficulty, everybody moved out and I faced major challenges all alone, which has made me a very strong person emotionally expected my best friend to give me a shoulder to cry even that i did not get so now i know that only my god can stand with me in troubles yes you have that faith and that faith can carry you through and our friendship or relationship with god is the only one where we have unconditional thing that you know even if my expectations are not fulfilled i still am obliged and i still feel connected to uh, god it doesn't happen with human beings. Surika says, what is the vaccination for the mind viruses of good uh, uh, friends? 
good friends you actually don't need to uh, you know have a vaccination uh, sirka it is vaccination that you need for those who are not really good friends or true uh, friends so as long as i am vaccinated in the sense that i do not become too emotionally dependent i am going every day for a walk with this person but the day i find i go there and i wait and neither has she come nor has she even informed me i say okay she may be having some problems uh, or some uh, trouble it's perfectly okay I, will, i appreciate the fact that the last 23 days she has come down and we have gone for a walk today and go for a walk alone or whatever it is and maybe i'll check up with her today evening to find out whether she's not well or something is there if i find something genuine then yes i go ahead even if she says no i forgot or no i was too bored or something understand that yes i can't depend on her every time but it is helping me to get up in the morning thinking that she may be there so i'm using that as a means of convenience for my own walk in it yes madhavi says to me friendship is beautiful it's me who is enjoying each and every moment and i am learning what i am if they come for convenience i am happy again thank god i am helpful to them yes like madhavi said some of us can rise to that situation where they say that if i can be nice to this person it gives me inner satisfaction that's one of the things that we are going to be spending some time and trying to uh, evaluate next week what punni was just telling you our manthan camp finding that inner happiness should not depend on others so if i rise to that uh, you know uh, status or that position where i say that i find more happiness in doing favors or being nice to other people when other people are nice to me i enjoy it i am also human i also have a need and i also have my wants but i will make sure that if i do not get it it will not affect my life i'll feel bad for a moment i'll feel little upset at that time but i will move on without being emotionally dependent on my friends Ah, Navina says, I think all the complexities in any relationship starts when we assume and misinterpret things. I think it's best to clarify things directly. Exactly, Navina. That's what I'm saying. No communication. Start off with, you know, communicating. The moment you have a doubt about any friend of yours, whatever category the person is, speak it out, and use, as I keep reminding, use more of I language rather than you language. don't say you raised your voice and you said this to me or you let me down and at 6 o'clock and you did not come this morning say i felt bad with you know when somebody is his voice so when you did that i felt bad you know i am a person who not used to people uh, speaking to me in a crude manner uh, i am a very committed person and i take the trouble always to be there at 6 o'clock so when i came at 6 o'clock and i found that you are not there i felt a little let down you know so i feel that if i am informed before and i'll be a little happier this is how we go to the thing ha ah, dr saikumar says do we run the risk of dependency and what do we do about it yes that is one thing which i want to caution you about that the, you can have any other form of dependency but you should not have emotional dependency whether it is a friendship or whether it is even a marriage in a marriage for example the husband may be the breadwinner so the wife is dependent on uh, his salary to run the household the woman may may be the homemaker and the person who cooks food and who cleans the thing or looks after the children so the husband is dependent he doesn't know how to cook or he doesn't know how to do a lot of things which his wife uh, does <coughs> so there is a codependency but emotionally there should be a give and take emotionally if there is only one person who is dependent on the other person then the other person is not even in a marital relationship eventually things can go bad there can be a burnout ah uh, surika says how does a person work at repairing unmet needs in a marriage of convenience start off the same thing start off by communicating i felt that i would have been so happy if you had come early and taken me out i felt that i enjoy your company and i wanted you to spend sunday with uh, uh, me but you went away with friends i felt this i wanted this 
and come out with solutions. When you have unmet needs, that is the past. Talk more about the future rather than the past. And say, next Sunday, I would like you to spend the day with me, etc., etc. Or I would like you to do this for uh, uh, me. And like I said, don't judge a person by one odd thing. No, this Sunday I've already committed, you know, my boss is coming and we have to do this. It's okay. So look at the calendar. This Sunday is such and such date. Can we have it on the Sunday after uh, that? Or we have a holiday in between, you know, on Tuesday it is Rajatsava. And there are no religious uh, you know, rituals to be carried out. So you also have a holiday and I'm also free. Can we uh, do that on that day? Give alternatives. Every person, particularly in a marital relationship, wants to have alternatives, does not want to feel trapped. As long as you are doing that, you can uh, uh, you know, stand by the thing. Namina says also, I think it's very important to maintain balance and not suffocate a person and not also be suffocated. Yes, Namina is coming out with very nice gems. I really appreciate the, that. And she has actually lived up to that balance by saying, that not suffocate a person and not get suffocated by a person. I'm a very strong believer that all close relationship, be it your best friend, be it your ma married partner, whoever it may uh, be, you need space. Please understand that. Please understand the significance and importance of giving space. If you are into each other all the time, if you're spending all your time, if you're sharing all your emotions only with one person, be it your best friend or be it your uh, uh, spouse, you are putting, as they say, all the eggs in one basket. And if that basket breaks, you had it. Ali, I was thinking that, uh, you know, taking off from what uh, Navina has uh, told, hmm. it's so uh, important. Sometimes we kind of victimize ourselves by telling, I'm the one who's always stepping up and helping the other person. Correct. Without realizing that that other person also is a friend of convenience for me and I am taking a lot of help and obligation. So the self-awareness comes in. No? Absolutely, absolutely. That is what I want us to be working on on a continuous uh, uh, basis. As long as you are doing that, you, know, you will find that you can go through that ups and downs of relationships Almost all related. There is no such thing as perfect relationships. Roshan says better to have genuine friends than people who are asking pity and acting to get your attention. Yes, absolutely right. Anybody who is showing pity. And as I said, that person becomes an emotional beggar. So with a beggar, you don't have relationship. You are charitable. You take pity on that beggar. The same way if there is an emotional uh, you know, beggar who is saying that, see, I am suffering like this. Please help me with this. I have got this horrible life going on and all that. Be nice to that person and you know, be charitable in terms of emotions, but be very clear that this person is not my friend. This person has got nothing to do with my uh, life, right? Namina says, I remember the movie Dear Zindagi. Shahrukh Khan said, why expect all the qualities from one person have a basket of friends? This I keep on reminding people. I keep on telling people. I come across people who say that, you know, I have got a wonderful life partner. I don't need any friend in my life. I am fully satisfied with all my emotional needs, my physical needs, my wants. Everything is fulfilled by my partner. I'm very happy for you. I feel that you are a very fortunate person. But again, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. Okay, as we are coming to the close, Vinita says, I think Ali, even in friendship, if the other person is able to read your mind without telling them that that's a true friendship, you have crossed the bridge. Yes, very much. You should be able to understand. As I always keep telling the empathy factor, that is the why behind the what. Don't get carried away by what the person said or what the person did. Explore, try to find out, build up that skill where you can, you know, a certain the why part of it. As long as you do that, you will have no problems. The last comment I will take that is Vidya's. I think if we are independent, by all means, we can maintain any kind of relationship. That's exactly what I meant when I said whether it is loneliness, whether it is low self-esteem, those are the things that lead to long, uh, wrong relationships. As long as you take care of uh, that, you are a contented person, you are your own friend, you will never have problems. 
And one closing statement I want to make before I close down, and that is to tell you that I personally have found among a lot of very wonderful, you know, uh, human friends that I have, the other friend, true friends that I have are books. Please give it a thought after this program is over and try it out and see. Okay. And next Saturday, I will be talking to you from the beautiful environs of uh, uh, Manthan. The topic being why we crave for instant gratification. Not all of us do it, but when we do it, why does it happen and what can we do about it? So that's what we will be doing next week. See you in the beautiful climbs of uh, uh, Manthan next Saturday, 11 o'clock. Bye-bye and have a lovely weekend.